When you fire up Helldivers 2 for the very first time, the game teaches you the basics of how to play, but there's a whole lot more to the world of Helldivers 2 that players won't be taught in any tutorial. Today we're going over my list of the unwritten rules of Helldivers 2. Feel free to add your own rules down below in the comment section. Here we go. Unwritten rule number one, always call in a stratagem if you're the last one on the dropship. Even if you're scrambling to get your ass on the Pelican with bugs so close you could spray him with a can of Raid, you are obligated to whip out a little red glowing ball and chuck it down before diving on board. That way, when you fly off into the sky to celebrate your successful distribution of democracy, you get to see a beautiful explosion as you go. It's the cinematic exit tactic players have been doing since day one, going out with a bang. Now, can this go catastrophically wrong and ruin somebody's evening? Potentially, yeah, but it's a risk we gladly take when in the company of the boys. Unwritten rule number two, diving to evac in eradicate missions is mandatory. When you've finished an eradicate mission, on one of those really tiny maps, you know the one I mean. If the map has a tall ledge or a cliff of any kind, you are required to leap off that cliff at the end of the mission in a glorious display of victory. Doesn't matter if it's calm or hectic or if you break bones on the way down, you will. It's just the way it is. If the map has a ledge, you dive off it to get to the ship. Cowards who run down the hill to get to the ship will be shipped off for re-education. Unwritten rule number three, always salute the ICBM explosion. If you're doing an ICBM, CBM mission out in the wild, you'll eventually prep and fire a big ass missile as you do. And whenever it happens, doesn't matter if you're there at the objective or literally anywhere else on the map. Whenever that thing launches, you wait for the explosion and turn to stare right at it, or better yet, salute it. If I'm running a different emote that day, you better believe I'll change it back to the salute if I know I'm going on an ICBM mission. Other emoting with the homies during the explosion is also acceptable. Unwritten rule number four, throw dead teammates at the Bile Titan. Nine times out of ten, if the mission is getting too wild, there's probably at least one Bile Titan around, potentially more. If and when teammates get taken out during these chaotic times, the plan is almost always to throw that teammate's revive directly at the Bile Titan. Is it risky? Only if you miss. Otherwise, come right down on that Titan and take your revenge. There's a reason the power steering ship module upgrade is awesome. Unwritten rule number five, always go back for super samples. You should always be trying to help teammates extract if your group happens to be a little spread out doing objectives. But if that teammate is carrying or went back to get super samples, you get up off your ass and damn well make sure they make it back alive. In that situation, you're not just a hell diver, you're a bodyguard escort combo. And you don't stop escorting until the job is done. Before we go any further, today's video is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions, Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in down under cleaning. Clear out that winter bush and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Manscaped is trusted by over 10 million men worldwide, including yours truly, and you should hop on board. Introducing the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra, featuring the all-new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra Electric Trimmer. The upgraded trimmer blade features longer, wider, and rounded teeth that cut through hair with ease but are gentle on the skin. It's also got a bigger LED light and introduces a brand new dual temperature feature, thoughtfully engineered to embrace and flatter multiple skin tones so you can easily light up those hard to reach areas. And of course, it's still waterproof, so you can take that sucker right into the shower. The package also comes with other gems like the Weed Whacker 2.0 Ear and Nose Hair Electric Trimmer, the Crop Soother Post Shave Lotion, and the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. And if you get the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra, you'll get the Boxers 2.0, comfy as hell by the way, and the Shed 2.0 Toiletry Bag. What in the hell are you waiting for? Head on over to manscaped.com slash falloutplays and get 20% off your order and free international shipping. Again, that's manscaped.com slash falloutplays. Thank you, Manscaped. All right, we back. Unwritten rule number six, deep grenades require a Kobe. If you're chucking a grenade into either a bug hole or a robot outpost and you're relatively far away, borderline mandatory that you throw out at least one Kobe on one of those throws. And Kobe. Hell yeah. Definitely don't say it if you're extremely close or if you're using a grenade launcher, that doesn't count. That is, unless maybe you're really far away with a grenade launcher, then yeah, you're good with maybe one. Unwritten rule number seven, never leave an emoter hanging, short and simple. Now, if you're balls deep in a level nine mission, I can understand waiting a quick minute to clear the immediate area before going in for a fist bump. That being said, if you're on the ship and you see a fellow democracy spreader just standing there with their arms spread wide looking for a hug, ignoring that 
that is a straight up crime. After all, emotion is what separates us from the automatons. Unwritten rule number eight, always load the mini nuke first. If you found a Seaf artillery station, you should always look around first and bring all nearby shells over to the loading area to see what you're working with. Then after you've moved the shells, you plan the order. Then you hit the terminal and load them all up. And with that in mind, always load the mini nuke first. And if you're wondering why, is that even really a goddamn question? Because it's a fucking mini nuke, that's why. After that, you load the rest in order of what will cause more fire and death, saving things like smoke for last. Don't misunderstand, smoke shells and all that other pussy shit is helpful, but fire and explosions are always more fun and that's why they go first. Unwritten rule number nine, eagle callouts are never not appropriate. This won't apply to everyone, but shouting out <coughs> when calling in any kind of eagle airstrike is completely appropriate. If JD or Turk were on that mission with you, they would completely agree. Unwritten rule number 10, always shoot wild hell bombs. Finding those out in the wild is an unarguable gift from the gaming gods. Now, in a perfect world, there would be a bunch of enemies around when you shot it so you can blow them all to hell in one fell swoop and you would make it out alive on top. But other times you may have to go down with the ship, but you know what? Nine times out of 10, completely worth it. After all, you're not just gonna leave that bomb undetonated like some kind of savage. Blow that sucker up and bask in the warmth of irradiated freedom. Unwritten rule number 11, random democracy comments are always appropriate. I mean, at the end of the day, that's why we're out here, isn't it? Fitting democracy into any mid-mission chatter on the mic isn't just fine, but encouraged. For example, democracy, bitch. I just witnessed a fucking murder, bro. She was in the way of democracy, right? Unwritten rule number 12, don't resupply hog. It's very simple. If you call in a resupply, everybody shares right down the middle, even Steven Seagal. If you're all four grouped up by the resupply, everybody gets one. If you're spread out across the map in two groups of two, you first make sure the other group is cool with you using the resupply, then you call it in and you each get two. If you're split up into two groups of three and one, and the group with three resupplies, everybody gets one, with whoever's lowest on gear getting the one extra pack. I'm usually pretty chill with people on my team calling in the resupply if they need it. I'll try to make do on my own either way. I think if you're just vocal about when you need a resupply, most teammates are usually cool with it unless they have literally nothing left in both guns. Unwritten rule number 13, grief not lest ye be griefed. Early on in Helldivers 2, a fellow named Gantz the Demon was caught on multiple occasions straight up griefing and team killing on purpose just to be an asshole. News of his traitorous behavior spread like wildfire and soon there was an entire community-wide manhunt for the guy so people could give him a taste of his own medicine. I like to think he's learned to be a better diver since then, but learn from his mistake. As a wise man once said, fuck around and find out. Finally, unwritten rule number 14, help new players. If you're doing quick play or gaming with a low-level friend who's new to the game, help them out. And I don't just mean explain how things work. I mean, give them stuff. Call in a shield generator pack for them to use, or maybe a jump pack. Let them share your EAT or your laser cannon, your railgun, whatever. They might not even use what you call down, but you know what? It's still nice to offer. If you're a really high level player, you're probably good enough to get by without it anyway. Or at the very least, you can call in more after a few minutes to use for yourself. If you have any more unwritten rules, please share them down in the comment section. I would love to read them. Thank you very much for watching. Peace. <laughs>